Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado and this is my buddy Puccini who keeps me company in the craft room and uh, is such a cat. <laughs> and we have a fun card for you today. It's a bit of a fun fold, not a new fold, um, one that's been around for a while, but this is a little bit different take on it. And I'm using up a little bit of that retired celebration paper, but it'll work with any color combination and any DSP that you have. Let's just get started. Here is my card, and uh, it opens like this, and it's got a little decoration on this side, and then you could do this any way you wanted. Um, I've used a couple of things, let me tell you. Um, I'm using the Sentimental, no, yeah, Sentimental Park, I think that's right, dies and stamp set. And so here is Sentimental Park, and I'm using um, this, and what I did was, <laughs> this says Dear Friend, and I really didn't have room for that, and I just wanted to say Happy Birthday Friend, so I cut mine in half, and I just used the friend part. And if I want to put them together, I'll just put them together again. Just did a little surgery on them. So I used this happy birthday, this friend. I used these uh, leaves over stamped by this. Um, and I think that is all I love uh, used. I did try to do this without the um, DSP in that I made a little piece of my own DSP to put on the outside, but ultimately I didn't like the way it looked with this. So I went back to this, but this has got some possibility for another card to create a strip that's got some of that, and that's using one of these leaves off of here where I just inked up one of the leaves and then this flower down here and it needs maybe a splatter or something. I tried one with this too but it was a little too busy um, and I over stamped these on top of it. Basically it was just a big mess. <laughs> so I didn't like that but what I did was I made a whole pages of this to get these out and you need three of these and there is a die for that just like this in the die set that cuts out that stamped image and that is a two-step stamping process this I did this in black and then I did this in rich razzleberry and I stamped off once and I'll, I'll do one so I show you exactly what it is we're doing in fact maybe I'll do that right now so I have some scratch paper here and a little scrap of white here and my stamps and my black. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And this I stamped and inked up really, really well and then stamp this image down on a piece of white cardstock, best done on a, um, a uh, cushion, so on your pierce mat, like that. And then I used my Rich Razzleberry and inked it up. Then I stamped off once and came back over to this and it's a pretty easy to line up. If you line up the top end of the flowers and the bottom end of the berries, it's pretty lined up just like that. And then using your die here, cutting that out and I cut out four for each card, 
three that run along here and one for the inside. So that's what I did. And um, let me tell you the pieces other than that that you need to make this card. Let me move these out of the way. So in order to meet, make this, and this one I did accidentally on Mary Merlot, um, which is close, but it's not quite rich razzleberry. It's a little bit more red. This is a little bit more gray, and it looks much better on the rich razzleberry. All right, and on this one, I used a white panel on the inside behind the designer series paper, and I didn't like that in the end either. So I have a piece of mossy metal for the inside that is four by five and a quarter, and then a piece of basic white that is three and three quarters by five. That's going to sit there. Then I have four of these little flowers, one of which is going to sit down here on the bottom on the inside. Then I have two panels in green that are one and seven eighths by five and a quarter to go here and to go here. And then I have one and five eighths by five inches of this DSP to go over the top that's got both the rich razzleberry and the mossy meadow in it. One for that panel and one for the inside. And that is what we need to make the card. That and the sentiment stamps. So we also need a little bit of scrap of the white for the happy birthday. And then we need a tiny bit of scrap of this rich razzleberry for the matting on the stamp. So I'll reach into my scrap bin and grab <laughs> my scrap sleeve and grab a little piece of that. So that is everything you'll need to make this card. All right, let's just get started. I think that I'm going to start with my stamping. And so I need this and my piece of uh, scrap here and my rich razzleberry ink. And so I'm going to take my happy birthday, which is a very small, I just didn't want uh, much of a profile for this. And I'm going to tuck it right down here, set this up. I think you can see that in the camera. Let me make sure. Yes, well, not quite. Um, what I'm going to do is set it up on a grid line. I think you can see that, just so long as it's got something underneath it that will help me stamp this straight. And then I'm going to pick one corner and set down my happy birthday and hang on to that for just a second. And there we go. We've got a happy birthday and then I'll use my trimmer to cut around this. And then I will put that matted on this little piece of um, rich razzleberry to complete the sentiment there. So that one is done. Now the next one is friend. And here is my friend stamp. And I'm just going to take a quick measurement here about how far down on this I placed this. And it looks like the bottom of it is at two inches. So two inches down from the edge of this, if I put this down like this here, there is my two inch mark and I know that I need the bottom of my friend to go right in around there. So I can stamp my friend right in here a little bit to this edge. And there is my friend. Okay. All right. Now then, that looks to be just about the same space that I did before. Almost exactly. Okay. So, I'm going to trim up my sentiment, and I'll be right back. Okay. This ended up trimming at one and seven-eighths by a half inch. 
So this piece needed to be uh, two inches by five eighths. And that should um, set up on there just perfectly with about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So I'm just going to add some dot runner to the back of that. Mount that on here. You need to be able to see all four sides on this one. If I set up my tweezers so I can see the top and the bottom and both sides before I put this down and straight. I'm thinking that's going to do it. There we go. Perfect. There's my happy birthday. And my friend is stamped here. And so now we just have to put the rest of this together. So the first thing we can do is mount these designer series paper on the green mats. So this piece is going to go here, so set down in place, and then this piece is going to go here. Set with the same margin and then this piece is going to go down here. This is such a pretty little card and can be adapted for just about anything and any kind of designer series paper where you take your colors from the inspiration of the paper. There we go. So like that. And then I'll show you where I got my inspiration. One of my team members, Sandy, uh, did a card like this. And actually hers is lighter and brighter. And I really like it. Um, and I might make some of those as well. It has just a few more layers and more of this DSP on it. So these items need to fit right along this edge and poke out here. And in fact, maybe I'll put my friend piece on so I can make sure I don't um, put the flowers anywhere near where it would hide my sentiment. And add this to here. There we go. Now then, these pieces can go on and I didn't raise any of this. Might raise the center flower on this one. So I just need some adhesive along this edge and I'm going to add quite a bit because people will hang on to this to open the card. And I'm going to put my little berries right up just over the edge of the green. Move it a little closer to the edge and put that in place and no blue is showing. So that's good. Now this one I might want to raise up on dimensionals and if that is the case I think I want those flowers to go or this berry batch to go down and go in right about there so I can put a full dimensional on this one and then I can put maybe a half a one on down on this side, one there, and one right in here. And put that one in place on the card. like right there and then put the last one 
with the berries going down towards the bottom down here on the card like that. And I think that friend is going to be able to be seen. And so we'll put this one in place right down here. So I'll need to add some adhesive on that one. Just make sure I get plenty of it on there. And add this one. down here. Alright, now then all we have to do is put our happy birthday on here and I'm going to mostly have that on the card so that this doesn't get bent up. So I'm going to do that one flatter on the card and I'm going to put it um, adhesive all down except the very very end here. And I'm going to set that right across there. There we go. And let's see. Yep, still got a little bit showing. So I'll use my gum eraser to take off any trace from the back of here. So my card will close properly. And there we go. Actually, I've got a little bit of down here, too, on the edge of this. What's life without a gum eraser, right? <laughs> it saves your work. And this is, looks like it's got a little bit of a decoration on the back for one that I overstamped. So um, I may back that completely or do a cutout in white and put it back behind there to hide that. In any case, there we go. And then I have one final flower here that's going to go right down here on the bottom in that place. And then I've got some Wink of Stella to put in place. This is what it looks like when it's not stamped off. That's not bad actually. But I like the lighter because of the, um, I think that's Fresh Freesia on the back of that DSP. But you could do it either full strength or stamped off the way I did it. And so there is my card. Oops, my birthday isn't very straight. Let's see if I can get that off and get that on there a little bit straighter. Now my friend doesn't look straight. Anyway, you can do yours a little better than I've done mine. <laughs> but there we go. Um, and let's see, my Wink of Stella I have here. So I will... I'm a little afraid it was gushing. That works like... that looks like it works. So I am going to cover all of these flowers in a little bit of this Wink of Stella. That will allow me to put some wink on all of these flowers, which I think is kind of a nice touch. I might even put a little bit on this one here, just because it shows through. There we go. Looks like I meant to do that. <laughs> anyway, there is my flower, and I think that on this one I'm just going to use plain old regular pearls. Take out my pearl bunch here and see if I can put maybe a pearl right up here. I think I would do this stamping on the Thick Whisper White just because it's a little stiffer. That's going to hang off. And maybe put some of these pearls on the inside a few of these flowers. So 
So I'm going to add a larger pearl over there. It's one, two, three, four, five. And I think that looks pretty well, pretty good. So there we go. And <clears throat> to dress this up further, I think <clears throat> it would be fun to take an envelope and dress the envelope up with one of these flowers stamped down here in the corner with a little bit of this. I'm going to put a little bit more ink on this. Sometimes it's just a real nice surprise to get your envelope decorated when you get something in the mail. It makes your card that you're sending feel a little bit more special. So I put some flowers on there. And if we wanted to, we could take a little piece of that designer series paper and just cover the back flap of our envelope and that would make it very special. But even that much I think is a nice touch. So that is my project for the day. Oh, I wanted to show you the inspiration card as well. So let me move a little bit of this out of the way. There is the card we made together today with a decorated envelope. And here was my original one that I made and I, I like the way it came out. Um, I really do. And this is the original card that Sandy made <clears throat> that was the inspiration for this. And she used the paper and she used the green backing, but she put it on a fresh freesia back, backing. And then there's some of this designer series paper in this designer series paper pack. And so again, if you picked a different pattern, there's probably a back side of a paper in there that matches that. And then take, in this case, the green. And she used the deckled edge on this one. And I think that is a very pretty flower. Um, it's a note card. There's no, um, no sentiment in it. But that was the inspiration for today's card. And on this one, I didn't put any embellishments. But I'm really happy with the way that that came out. So thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, well, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. It's always a good time to join Stampin' Up! If you join now, you don't have to have your first minimum due until the end of August. I have a $60 um, prize. I'm starting to put those on my blog. I just posted one the other day, Carol Lecker who's been ordering from me, and she, she got selected this month for a $60 shopping spree on me. And you can, uh, the way you put yourself in the drawing is to place an order of any size on my store, and you can get there from this, which is lbedinger.stampinup.net, and that gets you to my Stampin' Up! Uh, store, and you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com, under Shop With Me. So, Thanks again for stopping by, and I will be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye!